Well, version two lived a short but exciting life of six minutes, dying tragically in a driver error accident with a cement curb at over 60 mile an hour. Luckily, in the six minutes that version two lived, I did learn some valuable things. Uh, but heads up, this video is going to be an engineering cut because I don't want to wait another couple of weeks to reprint a whole new car. So what did we learn? Well, this is something that I've been learning throughout the RC hypercar development process is that tires are everything, especially their inner structure. I tried some stickier tires with version two and I ran into some of the same problems I had uh, from day one with the hypercar. Uh, the tires suffered from both inside and outside sidewall wear. Uh, the lateral loads were actually tearing the tires off of the rim. So to address this, if you're not familiar with RC car tires, they have an inner foam liner that provides the springiness for the tire. I learned from version one that the typical foam used in these tires wasn't going to be stiff enough. So I printed out some TPU tire foams, which are about twice as stiff as the foam that came with the tires and unfortunately about 10 times as heavy. But with that one change, version one of the hypercar gained over 0.8 lateral Gs. But at slow speeds, the tires really had no grip and were very unpredictable because they were so stiff. This time around, I bought a cheap set of slick tires from Amazon that feel stickier and they have a much higher density foam. So I wanted to try the foam since this is so much lighter than the TPU. But it immediately became apparent that this foam still isn't going to be stiff enough. Uh, you can see we rolled the tires both on the inside and the outside and really just destroyed the set of tires very quickly and again capped out around 2.0 lateral g's on those tires uh, luckily tamia offers a kevlar belted tire for one tenth scale touring cars uh, with different densities of foam liners unfortunately they've been completely out of stock everywhere i've tried to order them so eventually i have a possible solution for now, I'm going to go back to the original TPU tire foams since I know that those can take some of the additional loads. Obviously, the best solution would be to build an entire test rig and collect all of the data on the different tires and their liners at different loads. Uh, then we can isolate and test all of these variables and design a suspension specifically around RC car tire performance. Uh, but that's probably going to be in the maybe pile because that's a lot of work. Moving on to version two's body, uh, had a lot of different changes just throughout the entire body. I spent a lot of time with the cosmetic aspects of the body, just better aligning the seams and the body lines so everything just flowed a little bit nicer. I dramatically increased the width and the height of the monocoque to make more room for the electronics and additional ESCs when I add all wheel drive. Uh, which weirdly actually slightly improved the overall uh, downforce for the car. I made another huge improvement to the car by adding an access panel for the rear suspension. Previously doing anything with the rear suspension involved hours of work uh, with multiple long forceps. It was really like building a ship in a bottle, uh, but with the access panel you can directly access all of the fasteners and it's actually easier to work on than the front suspension. I also spent some time optimizing the body's design and structure. Overall, this resulted in about a 6% overall reduction in weight, or about 100 grams, and the body's actually quite a bit stiffer than version one. Uh, there's still a few areas where I wanna beef it up for uh, version three or later. Uh, I did try to print the body out of ASA and even lightweight PLA plastics to try to save weight. Uh, those both unfortunately ended up in spectacular print failures. Uh, this car is a really complex shape with a lot of very thin walls with massive amounts of supports. In fact, about one third of the print weight of the car is just the supports. ASA just warps too easily, even in a heated enclosure. It's going to require custom designed supports to support all those thin walls and to make the interfaces with the body stronger. Uh, but it would save around 5% in weight and it would be really nice because I could vapor smooth the entire body so that I could paint and sand and uh, just finish the car out really nicely. 
possibly some fiberglass or carbon fiber filled filaments might be a better fitment for the body as they warp less and are very stiff. Uh, but they're very pricey. So if there are any filament makers out there looking to sponsor a crazy project, uh, let me know. Uh, printing thin walls with the lightweight PLA also had some difficulties because the lightweight PLA is quite flexible and it's more than strong enough for the overall monocoque shell, but it really needs additional strength in the higher stress areas like around fasteners. So I would need to design additional uh, bodies around those areas where I can force the 3D printing slicer software to print those areas solid. Or I could optionally buy a 3D printer with dual extruders and possibly combine lightweight PLA for the overall shell structure and use PLA plus in some of the high stress areas. So as I mentioned in the previous video, I was going to raise the front wing by two millimeters. So I designed a new front wing. Well, Actually, I designed a number of different front wings and I ran them all through AirShapers cloud-based uh, CFD platform, uh, which was really awesome for being able to see all the differences. And I learned a lot about the hypercar's overall aerodynamics. Um, I quickly found that raising the front wing lowered the front downforce on the car significantly. And to make that downforce back, I tried to work the front wing harder but I always ended up with less actual total downforce on the front because the underfloor was actually getting less air when I worked the front wing harder. Unfortunately, a closed fender car like this prototype-esque body is really going to be front downforce limited. In fact, I found by lowering the angle of attack on the front wing, I was able to generate more front downforce overall. Um, but again, all this wasn't very large changes, mostly around 5%. Um, in the small amount of testing I had with version 2, I'm starting to see that in my quest to make more downforce, I may have been too greedy with how I'm making that downforce. And that's because in real life, the car is hugely unbalanced when going over uneven ground, uh, which is because we're just making so much downforce at the far ends of the car. Um, it's really creating a teeter-totter effect with the giant front and rear wings. Uh, the front wing is in ground effect and is very sensitive to bumps and pitch changes. So it tends to overwhelm the front suspension and it causes it to stall when it gets too close to the ground. And also because the front wing is hanging out so far in front of the front tires, uh, the smallest bump that the rear of the car hits drops the front wing down several millimeters and the rear wing is all high up in the air and just an aerodynamically insensitive jerk so it just keeps torquing the chassis backwards no matter what we do so in the end the chassis ends up going into hysteresis or for the f1 fans out there porpoising so the solution to this for version two will be to raise the front wing even further to decrease that aero sensitivity and hopefully stop impacting the front wing into the ground. And in addition, I will shrink the rear wing so that we can try to balance the chassis out better. Uh, right now, there is far more rear downforce than the suspension can handle, and it's causing a lot of lifting on the front end when it's going over bumps. So hopefully these changes will help to make the performance a little more predictable. Now, before it's untimely death, uh, one of the major goals for version two was to eventually run it as an all wheel drive car. So I designed the entire front suspension so that it can be used for either all wheel drive or rear wheel drive. Uh, but when I did this, I had to address a major issue that I had with the car with scrub radius. And the scrub radius is the difference between where the tire turns when steering and the center of the tire's contact patch with the ground. So a car with a zero scrub radius will pivot its tire right about the center of the contact patch on the ground, meaning that the kingpin access, uh, there is the steering access is directly in line with the center of the contact patch. A reasonable amount of scrub radius will actually greatly enhance the steering feel of a car because it transfers more of the forces acting on the tires uh, through the steering wheel. 
but excessive scrub radius. Uh, one, increases tire wear, uh, and two, it can introduce uh, torque steer. This is often seen in front wheel drive or all wheel drive cars with a McPherson strut suspension because that style of suspension uh, naturally creates such a large scrub radius. But in an RC car, you're really not going to feel this effect unless that torque from the motor starts to overpower the steering servo. And that was part of the concern I had for lowering the scrub radius with version two of the hypercar when I'm adding the front hub motors. Another challenge that comes from an excessively large scrub radius is that the tire moves much further forward and backwards when steering. And when you add in caster angle to the entire setup, you can actually raise and lower the front ride height of the car as you steer. And so you also need larger fender openings to be able to clear the tire. So that can affect aerodynamics. There's just a lot of reasons that you don't want to go crazy with scrub radius. So to reduce the scrub radius on version two, I did two things. First, I offset the wheel and lengthened the suspension. So on version one, the wheels were simply flat. And you can see here on version two, they're a two piece design and they're actually offset inside five millimeters. Uh, this was dependent on designing a front wheel hub that was small enough to fit inside uh, the diameter of the rim and still uh, fit the front hub motors. Obviously I'd love to offset it much further, but the front hub motor uh, starts to stick out if I do that. The second thing I did to improve scrub radius was to introduce something called kingpin inclination. And this is just the tilting of the steering axis relative to the wheel. So you can see in this diagram that the line here that uh, the wheel itself is aligned with is the camber angle, the static camber. Uh, but this other line to the left of it is the actual kingpin axis. And this is the axis that the steering will actually happen on. And the point where the axis hits the ground plane is the point where the tire will rotate around that steering axis. Uh, thus, by tilting that kingpin, we can lower the scrub radius. With this car, we're packaging limited with the size of the front motors, but we still went from a scrub radius of 24 millimeters on version one to a scrub radius of 14 millimeters on version two. So that's a reduction of 40%. It was a major amount of work and I basically just redesigned the entire front suspension uh, and the whole monocoque around it, but it's very noticeable when actually driving the car. As I mentioned in the last video, the cantilevered rear suspension that allowed for the massive diffuser was a bit too aggressive and it caused some weird wheel hop issues with the rear suspension. So I've lowered the lower control arm mounting points by four millimeters which meant I had to lower the Venturi tunnels under the car by four millimeters as well. Oddly, downforce actually increased because the diffuser uh, is actually being driven harder uh, and the vortices are actually a little bit stronger, but uh, the height sensitivity will have increased somewhat, but hopefully all that can be tuned out with the improved suspension geometry. Another item I found with version two of the hypercar was when I added the much stiffer heave springs in version two to be able to support the additional downforce was that I had to strengthen the upper control arms, both front and rear. And this is because the one major disadvantage of a pull rod suspension is that you need a much stronger than normal upper control arm for the pull rod to attach to. And I noticed that under high loads, uh, rather than passing that load through to the springs, the upper control arms themselves were actually bending. So I thickened the upper control arms themselves. In the future, I'm planning on using stiffer carbon fiber nylon filament for printing the control arms, which should help. So I just really wanted to get this video out here because I know it's been a while, but uh, it's taken a lot of iterations to get through to version two. It took a lot more time than I thought it was going to, but I really want to thank everyone for watching. I know that these engineering cuts aren't super exciting, uh, but the reality is with these type of projects and this amount of complexity is that failure is always an option. Version 2.1 
or version three, whichever you want to call it, is already on the printer. And hopefully we'll be back to testing in a couple of weeks. So I should have another video out here really soon. And I'm also really excited. I am designing all custom PCBs for this particular RC hypercar. And we're going to have probably more sensors than a lot of full race cars have. And so there's going to be some really cool data that we can pull from this car and be able to use to do some cool stuff like torque vectoring and being able to do some better analytics around the downforce and the actual handling characteristics of the car. So that's all. Thanks for watching and stay safe out there. <laughs>